I want to show you a way how I make my own replaceable surfboard fins. I use very simple tools to do so. This way I'm very flexible in changing the size, the shape, color and flex in whatever way I want to do. Here are some fins I've done recently. The advantage over a mold is that I can change the shape in whatever way I want. My fins have a wooden core and on the outside a lamination of glass, carbon or basalt fiber. Here you can see that I use three plugs instead of two. Like this I can make fins with a very narrow base and I can even move them forward and backward by one plug. I call this shape Danto, like the Japanese short sword. First I want to talk about strength. This is my fin looking from the side, including the pegs on the base. Looking from the front, my fin looks somewhat like this. Inside is my wooden core. It goes all the way down into the plug section. The core gives me the shape of the fin. The lamination that goes all around the fin gives me the strength. This section of the fin must be the strongest because it gets a point load during surfing. It is most important that your laminated fibers go all the way through this section. I draw this out one more time because this is really important to understand what happens inside the fin when there is force applied to the tip. The fin will bend and on the inside there is going to be pressure. On the outside, there is going to be pull. So the biggest force on your fin will be on the very outside. That's why you want to have your fibers on the outside. The fin is mounted inside the plug. In this corner, there is going to be a lot of force because there is a point load right there. Remember, the core is only to keep your lamination in place, to give the shape. Most important is to keep your fibers on the outside, have them in a good orientation and have them go all the way through. To find out the length, the width and the thickness of the fin, I draw it out in original size. Then I draw a cross section right at the base where the fin enters the plugs. I draw the laminated fibers around the profile and that leaves me with the wooden core. Now I know the width of the wooden core. I can draw it in original size. To find out how thick the core has to be, I must know the width of the blocks. Here you can see my block setting and my blocks are 6.5 millimeters wide. That means my wooden core has to be thinner than that to make sure that on both sides of my fin I've got strong fibers that go all the way down into the plugs. For the strength of the fin, it is very important to know how many layers of fibers you have on both sides. Also, you have to know how thick each layer of fiber is. Here you can see how I built up my fin. In the center is the wooden part, on the outside are the fibers for the strength. You can see that the center of the fin, which is the wooden core, is less than the 6.5 millimeters width of the plug. The thinner your core is, the stiffer and stronger your fin is going to be. 
To calculate the thickness of each layer, you take the weight in kilos per square meters and this leaves you with the thickness of the layer in millimeters. Here you can see how I built up the red football fin that you could see earlier on on the picture with all the fins. This time I didn't use plywood for the core. I made the core myself out of veneer layers and layers of basalt fiber that I laminated together and pressed. Here you can see a more accurate drawing uh, that shows you how to figure out the actual size of the wooden core. So much for the theory. Now let's start. Important is that you make the core all the way down, including the plugs. Just follow the outline, including the plugs. Never mind the shape of the plugs yet. Usually the profile is the thickest, about one third measured from the front of the profile. When you profile the fin, profile it all the way through, including the pegs that go all the way into the plugs. This is very important because like this you get a good orientation of the fibers where the strength is needed the most. I use water-based pigments such as acrylic paint. Here in this example I used polystyrene foam which didn't turn out to be really good. It's better to use sponge like you can find in mattresses. It's softer, more flexible and it doesn't push as much resin out of your lamination. Here again, better to use sponge. Paper tape is much easier to work with when you file down the gut over with your hand file. This is the preparation to build up the packs that will go into the plugs. I usually use mirror tape or spongy material on the outside to make sure that I don't have to use too much fiber and that I don't get a mess all over the fin. This is just to fence the mess, so I don't have to take that much down afterwards again. This built up part of the fin is really just to make sure that the fin fits the plug. The gloss inside is just for pressure, strength and to keep the brittleness away that you would have if you would only use resin. The spacers I use here or about the thickness of the width of the plug. When I press later on with a flat wood, I get a parallel surface and I don't have to take that much down with my flat file. If you screw in a couple screws on both sides of the fin, it'll do the job as well. Just don't forget to put some separation foil between the lamination and your wood. There is no rule to say how much or how hard you have to press. You will have to find out yourself. If you press too hard, you will squeeze out too much resin out of your lamination and you will get untransparent areas. The fins will be strong as well. After unwrapping, cut out the base of the fin before using the hand file. Like this, you have a lot less to file. Use a flat file. It is most important that you don't disturb the fiber. Keep the layers as thick as possible. This is your strength. This is most important where the profile meets the pegs. Right there you will have a point load. Therefore the fibers have to go all the way through. Be careful on that one. To top coat the fin I would stay with epoxy because I already laminated with epoxy. On top of this I use a 2K lacquer. Great! Finished! Ready to serve! Go and try it out!